Hello, Mac Irish Football Fan TV. We're here with the final word. It was Greece 2, Republic of Ireland 0. Um, apologies about the internet connection we have at the moment. My Wi Fi is down, and we're doing this on Wi Fi hotspots. So, Tom, sometimes it might be a bit blurry on this. Uh, a bl bit, bit of blurred lines last night, obviously, with the with the results 2 0. But we'll start straight in with the squad. One change made. Troy Parrott could be for Finn as as your thoughts. Yeah, I was happy enough with that. I thought Parrot actually did play well last night. Uh, yeah. Azaz probably didn't do too much wrong to get dropped out of the team, but uh, I was happy enough with the attack and change because bringing another striker into the setup set up couldn't hurt us because, you know, I thought we played well when we did bring the uh, forwards on the last game. So I thought it was the right decision. Yeah, when I saw it, I saw it, like look, the players didn't do too badly who did start, only but for now, and Collins is, uh, you know, um, back pass that led to the goal. Other than that, I thought he had a fine game against Finland and uh, didn't see the need to, to drop him, especially since he's your captain. And then you're looking around the rest of the park, maybe in midfield would be the only change you'd make. And a few people did make reference to Azaz and maybe he wasn't as effective as people wanted him to be. And Troy Parrott's obviously in form coming into this one. But like, um, it was a cauldron straight away you could see that on the TV you could hear the way RT were saying that the you know the the crowd uh, the Greek crowd welcomed the Irish team with booze and stuff like that and that look I don't have any problem with that I think that that's something that we should be doing as well on our end in the Aviva I think we should be trying to make it as hostile um as uh, like as intimidating as possible for teams to come and play because that's what, when I was growing up uh, and Ireland teams played against any other nation it was a place where no other team wanted to come and play us and we had the crowd and the players and you know the what the players were putting out on the pitch I think you referenced it in the, the pre-match it's kind of you need to give fans up to shout about and I think like the Greeks get that from the you know the Greek fans get that from the Greek players and that's why they are the way they are and I think if the Irish fans can start to being like that, more like that in, say, the Aviva, making it more of a cauldron for uh, when teams come and play us, I think that that's gonna, only going to help us better for us going forward. Now, as we said, we do need our players to give us something as well. Now, look, starting off the game, it, it was uh, the Greeks who kind of put us on the back foot, but we did have one early moment, and that was Evan Ferguson, who in my opinion, should have had a penalty. Watching it back, I watched it back again last night and I feel like he should have had a penalty. Obviously, it was a good press by Ireland. Troy Parrott forces uh, the defender to go home with it. It goes across the box and Evan Ferguson gets to the ball first and then is fouled. Uh, otherwise, he strikes that ball straight into the goal. bit similar to Calvert-Loon and, and, and Dan Byrne in that sense where he, the, the defender kind of catches the player um, but they'll try and say that it was just a, a natural movement type thing and ultimately, if that player, that defender isn't there, that's a goal for Evan Ferguson. Or if that's anywhere else on the pitch, it's a free kick. Yeah, definitely. Evan gets there first and the defender gets there just slightly late, but still late and takes out his uh, planted leg. And it means that uh, Ferguson kind of shanks the shot. And Otherwise, you'd have to imagine he scores that or at least gets it on target. He, uh, I think maybe it was just because he didn't sell it the way like some of the Greek players were. He, he kind of yeah, went surprised, over. He didn't he? Yeah, he just didn't really take the contact like naturally almost. It, it kind of, even though he was caught, he just uh, maybe that was kind of on his end, wanted to get the shot off, which was, you know, rightly so. He was one on one with the keeper. But uh, yeah, I thought was it was anywhere else in the pitch that's a foul. It's one of them where in the box, maybe the ref has a higher standard, but letter of the law, it's a penalty. And uh, yeah, we were definitely under pressure from the get go, but that would have seriously, you know, gotten us off to a great start. Exactly. And that's why it's so annoying is that there's no consistency in these decisions. Um, you know, and then from then on, it really in the first half, it was all Greece. It was just all Greece. Um, you know, in the third, third minute, we had our bit, but then in the seven minute, Greece, uh, Bacchusetis has a strike that was deflected past Kelleher's post. Um, in the 10th minute, uh, Maseras uh, got to shot off after, um, I think it was a strike from... Uh, Pavlidis, yeah, it was. It was Pavlidis takes a strike that was blocked well by Scales, but no one picks up the runner in uh, Maseras. He gets a shot again, saved by Kelleher. Um, in the 18th minute, there was a chance for Bacasetas, which resulted in a double save from Kelleher as well. Uh, and then from uh, Bacasetas and Pavlidis with both with shots. I think Pavlidis probably has to score there, in my opinion. If you if he was playing for us, we'd be very frustrated if he didn't put that ball in. If he's playing for us, uh, and then Janilas uh, with a late where sorry with the strike save by uh, Kelleher at the near post. 
Uh, so Greece, Greek has the Greek team had moved it around well, kind of centrally. We'd kind of we'd kind of set up narrowly to let them have the wings, but in that scenario, they played through us in the middle and got the ball out to him, and he went for a near post strike, and Keller saved that uh, with his feet. And then it was kind of half time, but kind of looking at that first half, and I put out a tweet, and some people decided uh, it was an embarrassing tweet. Um, some people agreed, but it was basically saying like this was a kind of really. Remind me of an old style or Irish performance from a defensive point of view. It was, it was bodies on the line, players like Smolix, was, you know, making the blocks. Um, Collins, Scales, putting himself, putting his body on the line to defend the goal and just not concede. That was the key thing. We went in half time and we didn't concede, and that for me was a was a big psychological thing. I'll, I know we didn't pay off at the end, um, but just to see us actually not give up the goal and we were still trying to stay in the game on the counter-attack and we did have a lot of, lot of the ball but what we did do is we weathered the storm quite well in the first half I thought and no, I, I, I did I say actually as well with the second team was that under Kenny I think we would have probably conceded uh, you know in the first half there and that's nothing on Stephen Kenny it's just because we were quite open uh, when we played under him or we seemed to be a bit more savvy under this new manager Hamer No I, I agree with that I thought that, you know, although Greece had all the chances in the first half, Baron, obviously the Ferguson one that we talked about, uh, Kelleher kept us in it. Uh, two particular saves with his feet that I thought were excellent and that near post one that was just complete point blank. You know, he keeps us in it in the first half, but I, I didn't think it was like for a lack of effort or for a lack of uh, intensity on our part, which I, I did think after the first half in the Finland game, uh, where I thought, you know, we were really slow, really lethargic, but in the Greece game, I thought like we did defend well. In the end, it, we we got away without conceding, and you know Kelleher is part of the team, so you know you have to take his performance when you're evaluating the team. You have to take Kelleher's performance into that as well. Uh, I thought we defended really well for times. Other times, I thought we were pretty naive in the way we were playing out. When we when we did recover the ball, we we'd start to try and pass it out from the back and and lose it again and put more pressure on ourselves, but. I thought in general, I thought we defended pretty well and, and, and did well to get out of that half at nil all because we talked about going into the game that Greece are a quality team. They're not the same as Finland. They have they have definitely more threat so, going forward and, and really in all areas, to be yeah. honest. And I thought we, we defended pretty well for the whole game. I know they mentioned the half time. It, it kind of reminded them of uh, that Moscow game away in Russia where the famous sort of Richard Dunn performance uh, don't know if I go that far, but I thought we did defend really well in the first half. Yeah, but like ultimately, uh, uh, pe- people just want to throw digs at this team no matter what they do. Like, um, and we could we'll probably come to that at the end of the the show. But like, I was watching them and just going, do you know what? This is what we want to see. Like, um, obviously not defended for the whole game, but I mean, in terms of being able to come in and look like we're capable of weathering a storm you know we've got players there that are used to defending they're not afraid to defend and they like some of their players were having really good moments uh Zolis, he's been a revelation for the greek national team didn't really do it at norwich but he's uh he's enjoying his football there back for some reason for greece uh really comes alive he's he's been a brilliant player for them um especially in recent times. And then you had uh, Pavlidis as well, who was obviously coming in in, in good form. And uh, you had um, Maseras on the right-hand side, who looks a goal against us as well. So you had, like, despite the fact that they were missing players, they still had uh, their attacking threat, which, you know, I think would, would cause a lot of teams problems. They caused England problems, and we all know how highly uh, England are valued. They're, you know, Euro finalists, they've been in the... Uh, semi-final of the World Cups and they've been in two I think Euro finals in a row and uh, you, you know you look at that and, and they cause them problems and uh, England struggled against them and got beat by them so for us to go there and like you know ultimately in the end and we'll come to the goals in a sec but like we did lose the game by two goals but we weren't really two goals we, well maybe the savings that would suggest otherwise but I felt as though we earned our luck in terms of not conceding the goal it wasn't a case of Oh, we were so lucky not to concede a goal. We defended well. Our keeper was there to make saves, um, you know, which you'd probably expect him to make a lot of them saves anyway. It wasn't a case of like they were 
unbelievable chances or anything like that. They were, you know, pretty straightforward chances in my opinion. And um, the one where Pavlidis gets where it kind of falls back into Keller's hands, it's just like a natural reflex. You probably expect Pavlidis to score that. But other than that, the rest from the rest of the chances, I, I couldn't imagine that you'd say, you know, he um it was an unbelievable save by Keller. He looked very comfortable. Look, he was he was amazing. I'm not taking anything away from his performance at all. Um, and without him, we definitely would have lost. But I just think when you have, at international level, they're the saves that, that you should be making anyway. But half time, nil nil, you're thinking, all right, great, let's let's start, let's get tight now for the for the second half. And we immediately go out. Nathan Collins makes a tackle out in the right back position. And then the ball falls to one of the Greek players. He passes it to Bacasetas. And for some reason, um, around that time and around that area, we always seem to concede. Edge of the box. Scales comes over uh, to try and make that block. And he's unlucky that, it, you know, he probably deflects it past Kelleher because I think Kelleher, the form that he was in, I think he actually saves the, the chance without it being deflected. And then you kind of looking at it going, oh, <laughs> should Scales have left it but then we're asking players to bait the block so um, look I don't think Scales did anything wrong but there, there was a gap now my, as I said my internet connection is down so I can't get the uh, the screen grab actually what I'll do is because this is recorded I'll put the screen grab over and you can see the gap between Robbie Brady and Liam Scales is like that it's really big and then obviously as I said Nathan Collins was over the right back position to make an tackle so he comes back inside but he's the other side of Scales so in the edge of the box, you have two players like that, and it just doesn't make it doesn't just looks like we don't know what we're doing. And then we concede the goal. Not long after, Hamer makes the subs. Um, well, I'll, I'll get your thoughts on the goal, and then we'll come to the subs, Jack Taylor and uh, Festy coming on. Yeah, you know, di disappointing after all the defending and uh, kind of riding our luck in the first half that we did to go out and just two minutes into the second half concede. But I think. You know, maybe nitpicking, you can say the sort of defensive line is off balance there. You're talking about the gap between Brady and Scales. But I think in general, we just need to hold our hands up and say that that was a brilliant goal by Greece. The sort of one-touch football around the edge of the box. And he does get a bit of luck with Scales getting the deflection. But I, I think it was a great goal. And uh, you kind of need to hold our hands up with that. Uh, Scales, I don't think we can blame him too much. I think... We're asking players to throw their body on the line and that's what he was trying to do. He uh, obviously didn't mean for that to happen and I'd agree. I think Kelleher probably saves it if, it if that doesn't happen. But look, I do think it was a good goal by Greece and either way, I, th I think we're a bit unlucky after how well we performed defensively in the first half to, you know, so early on the second and see it. Yeah, but it just seems to be our luck lately with this team. I don't know what it is, uh, whether it's a lack of belief or what. Um, I was listening to the Indo Sport with Joe Malloy and he had Damien Delaney and he had uh, Gary Breen on earlier um, while they were obviously at the Bows and Pats match this evening. Um, but like they were saying, like we seem to be very deep straight away and that's generally a sign of a, a team who are you know vulnerable at the back or lacking a bit of confidence that they kind of sit in to to block any space in behind and ultimately that's I think that's how we were we were like right on the edge of our box at that moment and then straight away we can see it. and I think that could be a thing um that we need to to look at Hamer basically said it after the game about kind of players puffing their chest out and being confident and maybe making a higher line in that in that aspect but I do appreciate that we don't have the most amount of pace at the back uh, to be able to make make that up if um you know there's ground to be made up but that's maybe where you want Kelleher to be high off his line but again that's a story for a different day and that's a story for the manager to sort out rather than us but uh the two subs Jack Taylor and Festy come on um and uh yeah uh within that time then um you know I thought Festy came on he was trying to get involved. He was trying to be our danger man then in the right-hand side. But I thought, ultimately, after a couple of attempts and the Greek fullback kind of getting the better of him, I think he he, he struggled. I think his confidence that he had against the Finland team the other night kind of um, waned a little bit because it, it looked like once he couldn't take him on that one time, his confidence was shattered and he couldn't take him on again. That that was my kind of viewing of it. What, what was yours? Yeah, I thought initially he brought great energy onto the pitch and did make a, an instant difference because Ogbeni had sort of struggled to get into the game in the first half just with the amount of defensive work we were asking from him. Um, just 
first he did come on, I thought he took his man on well initially, but then after a couple of times, it felt like it was just getting a bit predictable for the fullback to kind of defend against. And you were just hoping that one time when the ball got sprayed out to him that he'd just take a touch and whip it because I felt like the opportunity was there. We were getting men in the box at the time. We still had, uh, you know, I think we had uh, Smodix and Parrot on the pitch. So we're asking lads to, you know, kind of make their way into the box and you're looking for the wide men to get that cross in like he did against Finland. But it felt like every time he, he tried to, you know, take his man down the line, and it just ended up getting a bit predictable and uh, ended up being fairly easy to defend against. But I think it was better because it gave them, you know, something to think about at least. It gave us a bit of a track down, going down that right-hand side. And, and we'll get on to, to Taylor as well because I think out of the two subs, he was, you know, very impressive when he came on, instantly kind of getting himself about. And then not long after he com- comes on, he wins a header in the box and pulls out a great save from the Greek keeper. Yeah, well, I think it was a good play all round uh, for that. For that, you know, even to get up to the cross where Josh Cullen whipped it across, it was a good play out from the back, and we kind of moved it around quite well. Got it into that position, and then got the ball. And I just wish that Taylor had it maybe headed it anywhere in the corner there, or you know, it's probably a goal. But the fact that it was straight at the keeper, I think the keeper made it, uh, a few people saying the keeper made it look a bit more kind of flashy, flashier than it needed to be. Uh, the way he saved it over the bar. I, what I have been impressed with with Hamer so far. In the in the games just gone is is he does make subs at good times where he knows like, okay we got to bring a sub on here whereas I think Kenny in the past some of the subs have been very questionable at times uh, the times in which he brings them on maybe the, the you know the in game management where I think Hamer has a bit of that in game management about him because you saw the tide completely turned the Greeks looked tired once we took uh, Evan Ferguson off and brought the the other players on we had the extra midfielder and Jack Taylor. We started getting the upper hand and, you know, we were almost like you think of boxers and they, they just put, try and punches, punches, punches and they just become tired and then the other person comes into it. That's kind of the way this kind of game went. We were the ones then in the ascendancy and we were the ones trying to, you know, get that goal. And, you know, we didn't back down. Robbie Brady at times was getting almost up like a winger like he was against um, Finland the other night the way he finished the game. And I thought we were trying to make things happen. Ultimately, we couldn't break things down. And I thought that Adam Eder probably should have been brought on late on. Uh, he did make more subs. He brought on McAteer as well uh, late on. And he brought on Malumbi. And he brought on... Uh, there was one more sub he brought on. Johnson. Yeah, Mikey Johnson. Johnson. But I thought that those subs that he actually... All the subs he brought on Bar McAteer all made a difference, I thought, when they came on. And there wasn't huge chances. You said there, uh, there was another chance for... Um, Jack Taylor, where he swings a leg at it almost like a baseball bat, uh, and it, it kind of come off one of the Greeks. Then he has a follow up effort, which was kind of just out of desperation, and uh, it kind of just goes up into the air, and um, the keeper claims it. And I think that was our real big chance if he wanted to get a bit more composure, maybe on the second shot. But like, look, it is what it is. Um, he's coming in for his first cap. I don't think he done anything wrong. I think we should be looking at getting him in the starting eleven going forward. I thought he actually made a really big difference when he did come on. I thought Malumbi done well, energetic when he came on. Didn't really in- impact the game in the forward positions, but he was about the place, and that's kind of when we needed it, um, energy wise. But McAteer for me, I, I don't recall him really doing anything. Yeah, I spe- I think out of all the changes, even though it wasn't a substitution, I thought putting Parrot up front by himself, I thought Troy Parrot was excellent. Uh, I thought it, it seemed like every ball that went up to him, it stuck or he linked up with someone else running onto it. I thought he was brilliant, even though he didn't get his goal. I thought the link-up play uh, really kind of changed the game for us. And as you say, we were way more confident on the ball, uh, linking up in the Greek half. And we, we look way more dangerous in the second half in general. Yeah, I'd agree. I thought I thought Johnston actually made a, a great impact coming on the left hand side, took his man on, similar to Festy, but probably a bit more successfully. Um and then McAteer, yeah, again, a bit disappointed by his performance when he came on. I thought he every time he got the ball, he kind of either went backwards or lost it. It seemed I don't want to be too harsh on him, but he just didn't seem to really make too much of an impact when he came on. Malumbi, yeah, did well when he came on, but I thought yeah, out of the subs we made, Taylor and Johnson did make a big impact. And I know we spoke about Taylor uh, in previous videos that he could potentially be an option going forward in the midfield. And I think he definitely, you know, definitely showed that he, he has a role to play in this team. 
Yeah, I I don't actually agree with you with Detroit Power. I actually thought he had a bad game. I thought Adam Eder would have been a better option later later on in the game. Uh, I just don't think I just think he he struggled in my opinion. From what I saw, I thought I felt as though he struggled throughout the game, struggled to get a hold of the ball. I felt he was a bit bullied by the Greek defenders. Um as well maybe Maybe you would say more so the first half, but I definitely didn't think that Troy had... I've seen him have good games, and last night was not a good game, in my opinion. But um, I respect yours. I thought Ida should have came on around the 80th minute. That's when he brought on McAteer, and I was struggling to understand why Ida, especially when you think of Celtic and you think of the goals he's been scoring lately, that's a good time to get him on because he knows the field of coming on that time and scoring a goal. Um, but for some reason, he never came on. Um, Liam Scales loses possession late on in the game and uh, concedes a chance they fire it over the warning signs were there and then ultimately Kelleher gives the ball to Mantelas and uh, he takes it around him and scores when realistically you're thinking we should be going long there route one get the ball up as far to their goal as uh, possible and try and make something happen up there and, and maybe with an Adam Eda uh, focal point up there instead of a Troy um, Maybe that would have happened, but ultimately he gave the ball to Mantelas and you had the head in your hands going, Quivin, you know, after such a good performance, we're still making the errors that are still costing us games. Yeah, like we all know, 99 times out of 100, Keller is not going to do that. It's simply just a concentration error, but I think just for the bigger picture, it's just a team with this team lately that we, we just seem to give teams goals. Uh the Collins uh, goal against against Finland, Doherty a couple of times in the last window, and now Kelleher again. Um, you know, it's easy to just put it down to individual errors and and uh, you know a one off sort of happenings, but this is happening you know game on game at this stage. It's, it just seems to be just concentration issues from players at the back, where for whatever reason, when there's a lapse, we just give teams goals and. It, it seems to have happened the last couple of games now. And yeah, I'd agree that definitely late on the game that either would have been a better option than McAteer when we were really going for it towards the end. Uh, I just thought with Parrot, even though he wasn't kind of picking up the ball really in their box or anything, I thought he linked up well with the balls that were being fired into him. And I thought, you know, not to pile on Ferguson too much because I know we were a bit, a little bit critical of him after the Finland game. Uh, you know, I thought he, he just kind of changed it. When, when he went on up front, I thought every ball that went up to him sort of stuck and he so he seemed to find a bit, create a bit more space off the Greek defence than, than Ferguson did. And maybe just in general, that, that more bit of energy and sharpness, I thought uh, he showed a bit more. But I, I would agree that either was the better option to come on, especially as the game, you know, went on into injury time and when we were really kind of throwing things forward. Yeah, well, ultimately we lost the game. Um, but how would you assess the window as a whole? And uh, I suppose I'll give you my, my thoughts afterwards. So mixed, really, because, you know, Finland was, we were really on a high after Finland because the performance in the second half, there was serious meant to take from that. And ultimately the most important thing was we got the win out there. Uh, then to the Greece game, I thought there was... There was definitely signs of improvement from the last time we played Greece. We weren't as, you know, we weren't as hopeless as we were in that game because we were really dominating the Aviva. Uh, I thought we actually had a proper go, especially in the second half. Even in the first half, there was positives to take uh, defensively and, and from Kelleher. But as you say, the kind of, the thing that we're looking for out of Hamer, you know, as opposed to Kenny, is that we're looking for results this time around and we don't really, you know, as much as, you know, we're doing a show here and we're kind of nitpicking the performance and the different details from the game. The only thing that really matters is the scoreline at the end of the game. And, you know, you know, we lost. So there definitely is positives to take. And I think we are much better than the previous window. So I think it's a step forward, not a step back. But at the end of the day, uh, another loss away in Greece. Yeah, I, it's it would have been nicer if the results maybe were the other way around, where we lost against uh, Greece first and played Finland away, and we'd have the high of kind of coming away on the um, on the high of winning. But unfortunately, that's just not the way it, it, it was meant to be. But what I do take away from it is Hamer is starting to get a bit of a stamp. He seems to be coming out quite well after games and being honest, and giving honest assessments, and actually seeing what's been going wrong. 
And I think that that can only bode well for us going forward, that he'll see what's going wrong. He's also brought in some new players that he might he may like. They may continue to stay in the squad. Can he get a settled squad? Because we haven't had seen a settled squad for Ireland in God knows how long. Uh, probably back in the days when Walters and Coleman and these types of players were playing before Euro 2016, where we had a very settled enough squad. It wasn't always the same 11, but it was a settled squad. Uh, Randolph and goal every game. You know, We knew that he was the number one. At the moment, we still don't know if Kelleher and Bazuna, who's the real number one there, because they're always kind of interchanging. So that's what I mean. It's like we don't have a real kind of settled team. Whereas I think by the end of the Nations League, you'll have a fair idea. I think as well we've got options off the bench now which we didn't have in previous games and also if you think about it we've got players still to come back into that squad who might have a point to prove if they can start doing well at the club level and I'm thinking players like Michael Obafemi I'm thinking players like Aaron Connolly who if they can hit some momentum or some form they could be huge players for us and uh, we've seen what Obafemi can do uh, when he's on form the Scotland game Aaron Connolly, you look at the Portugal game, you look at you know how he took the Premier League by storm when he kind of first came on the scene there and he was kind of the next big thing as well for Ireland. If he can get his head right, if he can get back playing, he's a big player for Ireland. And then all of a sudden, you have numerous options out like on the wing. You have Johnston, you have you could play Smodix in any of those positions. You have Ogbene, you have Festi. So there's options on that that wide going with pace, genuine pace. Um, Connolly could play on the f- front three as well. Then you've got up front, you've got uh, Obafemi, you've got Ede, you've got Ferguson, you've got Parrott, maybe Callum Robinson if you want to put him in there, but I wouldn't really have him in that kind of bracket as the rest of them. Smodix can play there as well. Then in midfield, you've got Azaz, you've got Jason Knight, you've got Jason Malumbi, you've got Jack Taylor. Um, Josh Cullen you've got better Will Smallbone still to come back into that team as well so you've got options which we haven't had previously the only position where we don't have a lot of cover uh, for is in the wing back positions um, but what we did get a, a good idea from from this window is Darrow Shea can fill in at right back and look seamless slotting in right back if we need him to as well You'd like to think that someone like Seamus Coleman will come back in there. And if he's not playing at Everton, you'd imagine he should play for Ireland because I think that's the best way that Everton and Ireland should manage Coleman going forward is that if he's going to play for Ireland, he should start for Ireland and maybe be on the bench for Everton if he's going to prolong his international career or else he looks at Colm a day soon and letting someone like a Festi or someone like that come in and take the mantle and go forward with that because ultimately... Those, those full-back positions are our only real weakness at the moment. If we could find a left wing back, and people have spoken about Cirque, and people are trying to say, will Ferry at Dundee United, um, Ryan Manning. If any of these players can actually step up and take Robbie Brady's place, and let, let's not forget, Robbie Brady got a golden assist against Finland, and he was our um, most uh, creative player in those moments. So I wouldn't be hanging my hat on Robbie Brady just yet. While he might not have the pace... Um, he's so good on the ball that he can make up for that by keeping the ball at times when we need someone to keep the ball. Ideally, you'd want to have Robbie Brady maybe somewhere else on the pitch rather than that specific position uh, because he's so good at picking out passes and so technically good on the ball. Um, but ultimately, that's not going to be the case because you've other players there that are fitter, faster and stronger than him at the moment. So I look at this window with with a lot of positives. The only neg, well, there's two... Two negatives, you could almost count them as three. There's two negatives are the two sloppy passes and then the defeat against Greece. So you could look at it as three if you wanted to, but I would I would put both the, the, the passes in as, as a one kind of negative together. Um, so two negatives, and then there's a lot to be positive about, in my opinion. I think he's starting to get a stamp on the squad. I think you're starting to see more performance. And I think you see that in the comments, even of the the stuff that we've put, it, put out, like... There's a lot more. Oh, there's a team there. Oh, there's you know there's there's the makings of a team there. We we actually look like we can cause teams problems. We actually look like we know what we're about now. We actually know that this is a typical. In recent times, that was a typical Irish performance, despite the result. But in terms of just being horrible to play against, um, and just as I said, not conceding until obviously it happened in the, the but. If we could just get better at not conceding and not giving away sloppy goals and start being better in the final third, things will start changing for us. And I feel like the, um, a huge moment was the Finland game 
And look, Hamer's got his first away win against a team that are similar to us. He's got that win under his belt now. We've came from the goal down. We've got that mentality shift now in that regard as well. So we have made huge, but it was huge the wrong word. We've made strides in the right direction. And I think that that has to be applauded for the manager who people were talking about if we lost against Finland, you know, the fellow would be fired. That's how serious people were talking about that. You know what I mean? Hasty, I think. But that's where we're at. Like, have you anything to add on that before we wrap it up? Yeah, just one thing that I'm I'm really happy about with Hamer so far from what I've seen is that he's not afraid to make a change when he sees it. When he sees something he doesn't like, he'll cut it out, i.e. sort of Matt Doherty. Uh, when he sees something he does like, he continues with it, like we see him with Robbie Brady and kind of reintroducing Festy into the squad. So I, I think he still is in that phase where he's figuring out his squad, who his favourites are, who he doesn't want involved in the squad. And when that does kind of get settled down, like you were saying, a good team needs a sort of settled squad, maybe not starting 11, but a settled squad at least, so that there, there's that, that bit of continuity. That's when we'll really start seeing results. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Like I think we still are in the sort of, uh, the sort of bedding in period where he's figuring out the squad and, we just need to kind of give him time with that. Let's not, you know, lose the head here. Like Greece are a very quality team and they've beaten us four times, I think, over the last two years. And there's no surprise really because they are a really well set up team and they, they there is that sort of continuity that we're looking for still. So I'd, I'd hang on until, you know, we kind of get that. And it, as long as we can figure out the squad, I think we'll be all right. Yeah, well, I think, look, yeah, I think you made a good point there just in regards to, to that as well. It's like no one went to bomb players out and no one went to kind of bring players in and, and, and not be relying on favourites. You know, bring players in and, and make the difference and show players that, no, it's not going to be accepted if you're going to saunter back to, you know, get to not make a challenge or whatever it is. You have to want to be there. If you don't want to be there, you'll be replaced. And even if someone's not as good as you, you want someone who's going to give 110% and hard work beats hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work hard enough every day of the week. And while Festy might not have the career Matt Doherty has had so far in terms of the, maybe the moves that he's had, but he's still had good moves. Um, I think that Festy, you know, has put himself um, further along the pecking order now. Um ahead of Matt Doherty and I think he finished the game at right back will that be a position we see him maybe f play in the future who knows but I do have to say as well is that you look at someone like Dara O'Shea a proper leader who can come in doesn't moan doesn't you know doesn't care where he's played he just comes and plays for his country and plays well in any position that he's told to play and that for me is you know I think he's a future Ireland captain He's obviously the captain at his club, or sorry, he was the captain at his club at, at West Brom. He got a good move to Ipswich, and I think he's going to be a really big player for us in the future. Um, and now, the future is kind of now, but he's really grown into a leader into that team. And uh, I think I think he deserves big credit for the two games he, he came in and played right back. He didn't look out of place whatsoever. Yeah, definitely. And and just, I think we the one thing for the next win though that we just need to focus on and kind of hammer out of this squad is the sort of stupid mistakes the concentration errors and I think it literally just is that concentration errors we know Collins is a really good defender uh, Keller is a brilliant keeper these aren't things to do with their sort of quality as a player it's literally just a mental thing where mm. well we've seen Collins do it for was it, was it Wolves or Brentford against Wolves or someone he's okay, done it maybe, in the past he has done it we know that but he, he is a that kind of main part of his game is sort of how good he is on the ball. And we know he has the ability not to do these sort of stupid things. So it's cost us twice now. And, you know, going forward, we can't really afford to do that being, you know, a team at, at our level. So if we cut that out, then we're going to give ourselves already a, a big leg up going into the next couple of games. Yeah, sorry, I think you misunderstood me there. So what I'm saying is uh, I think you're right in what you're saying, but... Collins needs to cut that out of his game because for Kelleher it was like a one-off but Collins has done it a few times for uh, for this club a couple of times so I just hope that he just gets that completely out of his game um, because I've seen him do it a couple of times in the past and you know it's come back to haunt him I think against Wolves maybe for Brentford he did it 
and uh, you know that was obviously his old team and stuff like that. So I just I, I hope that he can keep the high level of concentration because I looked as a reason why he's the captain because he's arguably our best player. Um, when he's on it, he's arguably our best player. He's probably our highest performing player in the last number of years in terms of in the Premier League playing regularly. Um, I can't think of too many players that are playing more regularly than him at Premier League level and doing all right. You know what I mean? So, um, that's not a slight on Nathan Collins in any way, shape, or form. I really like him as a player. I just want him to cut those mistakes out of his game so that we can look at him and depend on him and say Nathan Collins is our man and he's gonna take us to the next level. Uh, he's gonna be our new Seamus Cole and he's gonna be the one who drives us on. So that's all I'm saying in regards to that. But uh, I think we'll wrap it up there. Um. Positives to take for the international window into the next uh, international break now next month in November against Finland at home and then against England away in Wembley. We will be at both games. Um, we've also supplied these videos out on podcast platforms as well now. So if you uh, can't watch us, please just come and give it a view anyway. But then if you go check the, the comments of these videos, we will have a link to the podcast, uh, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any of your podcast platforms. We will be on there. The IFF TV podcast, it's called. So uh, yeah, you can check us both out there and we'll have more content coming your way towards the end of the week. Um, yeah, let us know what you thought of the international break in the comments. We'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching and take care.